Hi, I'm Bo Monroe, Aircraft and Pixels guy. Uh, today we're going to look at my next project that I'm pulling down off uh, my stash shelf. Um, it's not this lovely, for me, brand new Wingnut Wings Halberstadt uh, CL2, uh, which my daughter got me for Christmas. That's one of the last trenches, I think, of these kits. Um, and I missed it the first time around and I'm very glad to have it and very excited to uh, build this but now this is about a different kit a kit that um, I've had on my shelf for 30 years it is none other than the old tool 124th scale Airfix Spitfire Mark 1A um, this is uh, the original boxing from 1970. I've had it for 30 years. I can't remember where I purchased this kit. Um, I remember why I purchased it, which is for a uh, analog for a video game I was working on at the time. You know, I was creating it in Macromedia Director. Uh, it was a stop motion aerial dogfight game. And I use this and the um, 124th scale BF109 uh, as uh, uh, models for the 3D models that I created for that uh, project. Humidity has not been super kind to the box, um, but I'm hoping it's all still here. I have blown the dust off of it. Um, so anyway, let's take a look inside and see what's here because I do want to build this model. It fits the zeitgeist. I think the Battle of Britain kind of resonates a little bit with what's going on in the world, especially in Ukraine. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look. All right, <laughs> so he's got this goofy little black plastic stand that all these models had. That was, that was kind of a thing then. I don't think that's a thing anymore wonder if they still have this included. Uh, I won't be using that. Um, and then there's a bag which is probably not the original bag but it's not in, there's no bugs in it and that's good to see uh, which has the instruction sheet which is in pretty good shape uh, and uh, the decals which are not in such great shape. They're very warped, very yellow and um, this isn't the fault of time, but they're weirdly off register, as you can hopefully see. Yeah, so um, fortunately, I wouldn't have been using the decals anyway. Some people say decals. I don't know. Um, so anyway, here's the instruction sheet. I do believe the new tool mark 9 by airfix in 124th scale has like 220 steps or something anyway it has a whole lot of steps this one appears to have 18 um, obviously this is not as complex a model but uh, we'll make it complicated all right so yeah, there's two schemes included. There's the uh, cool black and white underside uh, early early war scheme and then a later scheme. Neither of the ones are probably ones I'm going to do, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's the instruction sheet. So what else do we have? So. Here's the box of parts. Let's have a look. Actually, yeah, let's have a look. Um, fuselage halves. It looks maybe like maybe this is broken right here. Let's see if. The other one, yeah. I think 
I think there's a little bit missing right here in the cowling um, attachment stuff. Um, and um, hopefully you can see this. I probably should move this box out of the way. Um, Maybe the camera can see that uh, the <laughs> fit is not good. Um, if I have the tail put together, we got a little bit of a, a cleft nose here. Um, and yeah, this does appear like there's something broken here, but it's all right, not to worry. We'll figure it out. Um, They have, uh, so I don't believe this electrical panel door right here belongs on the fillet of a Mark I. I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. Also, this huge reinforcement rib uh, or reinforcement strip that they've added to the top of the fillet would not have been uh, on a production plane that would have been on something that's been repaired probably well after the Battle of Britain I think but um, yeah it's on both sides it looks like yeah uh, but anyway the details pretty good it looks like the ha um, the hatches are in the right places um, you know I'd have to like go over this with a little bit of a fine tooth comb there's a little access door on the starboard side of the uh, vertical fin that yeah they have missed but otherwise it's I mean it's pretty decent for 1970 it's pretty impressive um, upper wings You know, what's kind of cool about these, and it's, it's a little bit scratched up, uh, but nothing too horrible. Uh, the thing that's kind of neat about these old kits is you really can see the, the handwork of, of the tool maker that made these. You know, the, these are not CAD designed by any means. These are made by an artisan or an artist and um, it really shows and really in a sense you know that's kind of appropriate because these planes were you know kind of handmade and they were you know had kind of irregular edges in places and stuff <laughs> so in the underwing here they've they've also sort of copied something from a museum which really shouldn't be here here's this like um, very prominent and kind of way over scale uh, reinforcement strip that again is something that is probably long after this was in a maintenance unit and and not um, a frontline fighter anymore was this repair added but they've uh, you know they've dutifully copied what they saw hanging from the ceiling at the science museum or whatever and uh, you know there it is but no, no big deal removing it um, but yeah, the detail is pretty nice. It, you know, at first glance, it looks like stuff is in the right place. The hatches are, you know, the wing is a lot thicker than scale. And so the hatch openings look a little funky, but anyway, yeah. And that's something that's sort of funny about these models at the time, you know, there's no wheel well detail. There's no rib detail on the uh, inside of the wings. So it's just like, you know, <laughs> like like that uh, Milton Bradley operation game where you, you know, sort of look down into the little hole and there's a little prize inside like the bread basket or the Charlie horse or whatever. <laughs> and there's like no representation of the, any of the other inside of the stuff. It's just like this little, you know, like a little advent calendar thing that you open up and you find a little prize inside. Uh, it's, you know, more like uh, kind of a, you know, 
I was like, look inside the door and see what's there versus, you know, kind of a real representation of the structure of the plane. But anyway, um, we can work on that. So what else we got? Uh, the other wing. Um, yeah, then, you know, I, I cut some pieces off back in the day. Um, still a lot of stuff still on the sprue. Uh, I think there's two sprue trees originally in the kit, and I think they're both mostly here. Um, you know, the fabric molding at first glance on the rudder, I guess it's got a little bit of the starved horse effect. That's probably more, to, you know, probably a little bit overscale, but I don't know. Um, on the on the rudder here and on also on the aileron or not the ailerons the uh, elevators uh, where are the ailerons not to be seen we've got some ammo boxes we've got the um, yeah we've got the doors that are flat like the early doors were um, no spoke oh no they're five spoke wheels um, I think we can do better than that with some of the aftermarket stuff. I think Barracuda makes some really sweet looking um, five spoke wheels and tires for this. Okay, so then this sprue. Come on, here it is. Here we have the eight Brownings. Still all on the tree. One of the rocker covers is missing. I don't think these will move off of the tree. I don't think I'll use them. They're pretty blobby. Um, it looks like this frame is a little bit warped. The other ones look straight. And um, those these 124 kits had this kind of cool thing, uh, I thought, at the time. And I still kind of think it's neat, although I'm pretty sure I won't use it. Um, where they had the clear backing piece that you um, inserted behind it. And I can't remember if it, I guess it doesn't come with decals for the instruments, but anyway, you could at least make them look like they had some depth, um, some glass depth to them, which was kind of neat. Here's the little seat um, rise, uh, raising mechanism. It's got the two-step pedals, which I'm pretty sure is not correct for at least a mid-production Mark One and an early production. Certainly not correct for an early production Mark One. I. I don't know when they went to the two-step pedals, um, but I think it's maybe not super correct. Um, the exhaust pipes, which are right here, are manifolds. I guess is really more correct. Are <clears throat> they're not great? Um, there's no sort of opening detail in it. Looks like it might be pretty hard to get there and also I'm not really sure I'm not really convinced they're the right shape um, I do believe there's some neat aftermarket options there though so anyway that's that sprue now we've got a bunch of loose odds and ends here's a landing gear um, you know, I think the primary consideration back then was to have it have a working uh, retracting action um, versus really uh, scale fidelity. I can see that it doesn't have the locking lug on it. Um, it's not like there's a whole lot to this, but. I think that's going to be an area that's going to need a lot of attention. So the rubber tires, um, they don't, you know, I don't hate rubber tires, honestly. I, I think a lot of people do, but they don't, doesn't look like they have the trademark stuff molded into them or any kind of tread. So they're pretty ho-hum. Um, there's the pilot figure. Uh, it's actually not an awful molding. I don't love, in fact, I dislike putting figures in my, my with my models. I, I kind of think it kills the illusion. Some people can do it and pull it off 
and uh, you know hats off to them it's just not my cup of tea uh, so if anyone wants this the pilot figure its arms are in here somewhere they are welcome to it just uh, send me a note in the comments um, spinner not a lot of detail to it but um, it looks to me to be the right shape um, offhand um, here are the ailerons uh, yeah I was kind of afraid of this yeah they've modeled the ailerons as the later metal type uh, I'm pretty sure all the Mark I's eventually got metal ailerons, but long after the Battle of Britain was over, from what I understand. Uh, they, the ailerons, the fabric-covered ailerons were causing problems um, uh, with uh, the fabric uh, ballooning in them, and then uh, there were accidents uh, that happened due to that. And so uh, metal ailerons were the solution but I'm pretty sure that happened after the Battle of Britain now I think all the Mark 1's that are in museums I know there's a couple of flying Mark 1's um, I think it's P9734 uh, or something like that anyway one of the there's a recent restoration of uh, semi-recent restoration of one that um, I actually believe they they did use fabric covered air lines on it uh, in fact I know they did um, you know kind of uh, a little bit of a extra challenge for the people that are operating it but anyway so here's one of the rocker covers and it you can read Rolls-Royce on the um, on the rocker cover uh, the engine the Merlin the lump is going to be a little bit of a challenge this this tool um, for the Merlin um, is different. It's this, you know, this is the first 124th scale tool that they did of the Merlin, and it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, you know, it's got seams in funny places. It doesn't really fit. You know, the basic lump doesn't fit together all that well. But sort of the big drawback is that all of the lines and pipes on it and everything are molded you know straight onto it so you know there's going to be a lot of scraping and fooling around to um, really bring out the detail and I don't think it's not I think this is salvageable but I think I'll probably start with the uh, hurricane uh, the hurricane tool that I have in the other kit instead maybe it should be the same mark of Merlin um, or I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't think there are so any great aftermarket options uh, in 124 scale for this. Um, I may be casting my own. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe creating my own 3D CAD version of it to print. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of it. Um, here's a cowling be the port side um, cowling piece it's got this lump right here which is supposed to represent the generator cooling intake you know there's no sign of any opening on it at all it's just like a bump bump but um, you know that's something that will be addressed yeah, and I kind of remember this not fitting super good. Um, yeah, and it, well, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of not super great the way it fits. But, you know, this was 1970. So, anyway, there's the kit. This is a project. Um, I'll update it from time to time. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like it, hit subscribe. Uh, until then, or until the next thing, thanks for watching. Bye.